Hi and uh, welcome back all of you for the Mastering Course 2024 where we are discussing the last 21 years question paper in a very topic wise systematic manner. So continuing with microbiology discussions where the topic of discussion was systemic bacteriology. The next topic I am going to take is on Legionella. Okay, Legionella, where we could discuss questions on Legionella, primarily first to start with Legionnaire's disease. So first I'll discuss the question with you, then I'll come to some basics on Legionella, then we'll go into the further depth of whatever is required. Okay, so to start, let us see the question which was asked in a very recent, that is 21-22 paper, where a 57-year-old diabetic patient develops symptoms of severe cough. Now see, when you are reading something, don't all of a sudden jump to, you know, any conclusion before you completely read the question. I'll come to this, how to attempt a paper. The primary purpose of this question discussion is to give you an idea how to attempt these questions. Okay, we have a very detailed comprehensive course, as you know, where we discussed all the theories and everything. The primary purpose of this is Definitely to make you understand certain concepts, but more importantly, how to attempt a question paper, especially for those people who, you know, uh, who is out of touch with for a very long period, not in touch with the MCQ pattern. And also for those BDS pass outs where you have been writing lots of theory exam, it is completely different from what you know, NEAT MDS or INSCT MDS is completely different from your theory exams. So you have to have lots of concepts. People misunderstand that if I study some theory and I'll go or even I solve some questions, I'll go and attempt it, it will work out for me. No, the last, the most recent exam, if you see, there were lots of repeats, no doubt. But the medical paper, the medical paper, if you don't have the basics and if you don't know the knack, even if your basics is also clear, if you don't know the knack of solving questions, it is going to be really difficult for you to answer certain application level or clinical level questions. Okay, so let's come to back, come back to this. So, so symptom was severe cough, shortness of breath, fever. I'll discuss in detail each and every point. Let us just see the question. So there was fever, muscle aches. So with this question, this particular question, the key is muscle aches. I'll, I'll tell you why. And headache, definitely. After staying, now this is very important. After staying in an air conditioned room in a hotel this is the most key point okay you're discussing any question or you are you know solving any question any concept especially the, when the question is very long you have to search for the key point from whatever theory you have learned okay so the, it's an air conditioned room in a hotel later he was uh, diagnosed definitely the symptom itself say that it's a pneumonia so he was diagnosed with pneumonia so the question is not what is the diagnosis okay after the lab test so the question is which of the following bacteria is responsible for this let's see the options so this was 21 22 question okay now as you all know that you can't write neat 21 22 you have to write it neat pattern okay pattern has to be there that's the new rule anyway so staphylococcus aureus is it that is it chlamydia is it legionella is it pseudomonas so let's discuss certain details of this okay before going on to any further details let's have a very very basic idea not detail very basic idea on legionella okay a very basic idea not i'm not going to any details but basically what is legionella it's a gram negative rod it's a gram negative rod so you can see this picture there gram negative that's it's red red pinkish color so it's and it's rod rod okay uh, that is bacilli gram negative bacilli and the diseases caused. Now this is where we are going to discuss two things today. What are the diseases caused based on that? One is Legionnaire's disease, which is nothing but it's pneumonia primarily. Okay, the one we are discussing there in the question. Okay, basically I'll tell you what pneumonia is. It's a fluid filled. Okay, this is the fluid filling inside. 
this is a condition without pneumonia and this is the alveolar sacs filled with fluid i'll come to this and there is another disease called a pontic fever where there is no pneumonia this is very important to understand the two diseases caused by legionella one is legionnaire's disease which is pneumonia and pontic fever where there is symptoms related to lung infection but there is no typical pneumonia so for that you have to understand what is pneumonia okay you have to understand what pneumonia is what's the definition of pneumonia so the definition of pneumonia is a pneumonia is a lung infection like any other lung infection but where the infection causes lots of inflammation okay and fluid build up that's a key fluid build up in the lung alveoli we just saw this the fluid build up so in the lung alveoli where the patient feels difficult to breathe and all those symptoms so this is it same thing okay you can see the fluid build up there a fluid build up there so that's what is pneumonia so now what's the cause the cause is bacteria now it's not very important anything can cause pneumonia bacteria virus fungus parasites anything can or even chemicals inhalation aspiration of food uh, now ga patient okay for your omfs okay oral maxillofacial surgery ga patients can develop aspiration pneumonias okay now what are the symptoms again just a general understanding don't learn this okay now when it comes to see uh, neat mds i always tell this again and again you don't need to buy hard for neat mds just understand and develop photographic memory if you develop photographic memory the answer is in front of you isn't it in your neat mds or ini ct mds answer is there in front of you among one of the option so if you can develop a photographic memory that's enough so just see okay so cough is there fever chest pain shortness of breath so all these typical symptoms not very significant for us now because understandably if there is fluid build up you will have cough you will have chest pain because lungs is there in the chest you will have fever shortness of breath so everything will be there now what is more important so definitely fatigue also now what is the treatment 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 depends upon the cause again that's a very detailed lecture where we have discussed pneumonia in detail in general medicine in our comprehensive course okay so i'm not going into depth of it let's discuss let's come to this question so does all the organisms given in the option cause pneumonia this is how you have to attempt this questions okay i'm not saying that you should be very thorough with everything but you have to have an idea of solving the question the first thing you have to ask is that did you ever study anything related to other options where they are causing pneumonias so again for our comprehensive batch students they know it what all we have discussed each and every bacteria in detail so does all the given options causes pneumonia let's discuss that so staphylococcus aureus was there in the option chlamydia is there legionella definitely that's the topic of discussion for today pseudomonas so do them all cause pneumonia yes the answer is yes but the key is this picture air conditioned room which one causes pneumonia to a patient where he stays in an air conditioned room hope you can see the picture air conditioned room so this is the key essential to you okay so air conditioned room yes all of them causes pneumonia okay all of them causes pneumonia so as i told you but the key word here is air conditioned hotel why legionella please understand legionella the bacteria are often found in water sources fresh water sources like cooling towers see that cooling cool waters okay cool water cooling towers large plumbing systems and they can grow in poorly maintained air conditions air condition system including those in hotels so this is the key you have diagnosed it okay you have diagnosed the muscle pain is again a feature of pneumonia related to we saw the question muscle pain so many bacteria causes pneumonia but muscle aches is not a feature of these pneumonias we'll come to that in another question okay now coming to the other bacteria in the same option staphylococcus aureus now when it comes to staphylococcus aureus the basically it is not the air conditioned system in hotels it is basically acquired from hospitals through direct contact that's a key direct contact with the infected material infected material not simply some watery environment where there is legionella infected material from the patient okay so that can can't be the answer again next again continuing with the same thing 
chlamydia again respiratory droplets from the patients all of them is directly from the patient and not not air condition environment another thing to note legionella you can't get it directly from the patient okay that's a key you have to stay in any of this environment which i've just said to get this legionella others spread through patients so pseudomonas aerogenosa can be found in soil water where it can be also associated with health care associated infections okay or weakened immune system now they basically the key here is all of them all the pneumonias in the option is caused from patients except legionella which is from the air conditioned environment where legionella can thrive that's the key here okay that's the key so the correct answer is legionella the correct answer is legionella now now what are the most common causes of pneumonia that's another point i just want you to know the first one is streptococcus pneumoniae okay so we saw staphylococcus aureus please note this this is where you have to understand staphylococcus aureus was there in the option so streptococcus pneumonia one point to note here is it's the most common cause of bacterial pneumonia in adults okay it's the most common cause of bacterial pneumonia in adults please note this is can in itself be an mcq okay most common bacterial okay most common cause of bacterial human of hemophilus influenza in older people and people with weak immune system okay not very significant and then you have got influenza virus now this is the most common cause of viral pneumonia so this uh, most common cause of bacterial is streptococcus pneumoniae and viral it is uh, this influenza okay influenza virus and then we have got rsv virus that is one of the very common causes respiratory syncytial virus then you have got mycoplasma now a typical feature of mycoplasma is that is bacterium again and it's a common cause of atypical pneumonia which is a very milder pneumonia they can ask you the most common cause of atypical pneumonia is mycoplasma mycoplasma as you know that it is a cell wall deficient bacteria isn't it that's one more thing now also known as walking pneumonia so atypical pneumonia other name is walking pneumonia just know it and it is a much milder version so what you have learned here is legionella will come to more questions but here the key what you have learned is legionella okay legionella can cause pneumonia and typically when you stay in an air conditioned environment all of the bacteria it is direct person to person contact now please note legionella doesn't cause person to person contact what does it mean if imagine i have got legionella pneumonia i talk to a person he will not develop to my he will not develop my pneumonia okay he can only develop if he goes and stays in an air conditioned environment where there is legionella okay not that he stays if all cases uh, there is legionella in air conditioned room no poorly maintained air conditioned room so that's the first question hope you have understood it okay and few more just very important points to quickly remember streptococcus pneumonia is the most common cause of bacterial pneumonia and influenza is the most common cause of viral pneumonia and mycoplasma is the most common cause of atypical or also known as walking pneumonia okay walking pneumonia now coming to the next question which is on the transmission of legionella the question is all of the following are true statements with regard to legionnaire's disease which we just saw pneumonia uh, except now many students miss this except in many questions and they make a silly mistake so be very careful okay now antibody in the urine is diagnostic now this is partially true another concept i'm going to explain here okay now water bone disease it's a water bone disease yes the question is all of the following are true except so a is partially true i'll tell you why b is true can infect amoeba intracellularly that is also true i'll tell you the details of it and human to human transmission is seen absolutely not we just saw that it is not seen isn't it so correct answer is d now let's come to the options one by one okay that's very important to understand so option a is antibody in the urine is diagnostic please note now see any bacteria is infecting the body antibody is produced okay and it is being uh, excreted in the urine so it's a very uh, it's not really true see uh, so it's a very common diagnostic method 
but not always diagnostic you can get false positive and false negative results here okay the more uh, important diagnostic test here is culture okay culturing the bacteria i'll tell you we'll come to the culture or you can also do pcr which is very diagnostic but definitely uh, very costly so please note one thing which will help you is uh, this picture okay this is a question mark i put there okay so that which helps you now see this is the antibody in the urine this just this picture should remind you of this particular thing there is antibody in the urine but not always diagnostic okay so please remember this picture now let's come to the next option option b where it's a waterborne disease absolutely yes because we studied it's seen in fresh water environments ac everything it is seen okay so there is no doubt in understanding this remember this picture with ac okay so that's enough for you to understand this now let's come to the next option option c can infect amoeba intracellularly intracellularly yes this bacteria has got the ability to invade the amoeba the unicellular organism amoeba and replicate within the amoeba cells okay and this will act as a reservoir this particular thing will help it act as a reservoir okay for survival and proliferation in the back the amoeba so amoeba can act as a reservoir that's one new point which you study so again another picture this picture will help you though it is not typically legionella inside it but this picture should remind you of okay when you sit in the exam the photographic memory should come of this picture that yes it is effect infecting amoeba okay and it can act as a reservoir now coming to the next option option d human to human transmission is not seen we already said it's false that's so that's the correct answer okay so legionella disease is not transmitted from person to person basically inhalation of aerosolized water droplets okay which is from coming from the air conditioned systems and cooling towers etc okay so yeah okay air conditioned systems cooling towers and all those things so that is about it so that's another thing so please note once again i'm telling you few things antibody is not always diagnostic definitely it's a water bone it can infect a amoeba and act as a reservoir okay remember this picture and yes one more picture i just want to tell you this okay that is it is never ever man to man transmission cannot occur see the cross there okay see the cross shown there which says that man to man transmission doesn't occur so now let's come to the next question on legionella this is a very important topic for you okay as you know that in the recent very recent years questions has been asked okay now this particular question i think was asked in 2016 or 17 okay now let's come to the next question now the next question is on clinical feature and i am going to teach you a very 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 important clinical feature which you should always always remember when it comes to legionella besides pneumonia okay so the very important clinical feature is now let's come to this question a 29 year old female has diarrhea so it's a very important feature again diarrhea with pneumonia okay but more important with muscle aches confusion and high grade fever with bilateral pneumonia or pneumonitis whatever you call it they're asking what's the diagnosis options are staphylococcus pneumonia definitely it causes bilateral pneumonia h influenza also causes it bilateral pneumonia okay only mild pneumonias are unilateral some viral infections and some very mild pneumonias mostly severe pneumonias typical bacteria which cause pneumonia all of them are bilateral so there is no confusion in that that which one causes bilateral pneumonia or not okay so then come to the next option chlamydia so the first thing is see first thing you have to just maybe you're not aware of this that which of the organisms the correct answer is legionella okay but now what is important is does all the organisms in the list cause bilateral pneumonitis what it said you is yes because all the severe pneumonia organisms all of them okay i, mean, I don't want to name them including legionella can cause bilateral pneumonitis you can, you don't need to remember the list and all here okay but now how to differentiate that's the key that's a key how to differentiate between these pneumonia so i have given you a chart here okay which will surely help you to understand this so there is three areas which i am discussing one is streptococcus pneumonia second is h influenza and legionella 
okay legionella pneumophila that's a bacteria's name so we are discussing just for your understanding this is gram positive the other two is gram negative okay gram negative so streptococcus is gram positive the other two is gram negative all these are there in our detailed lecture we have discussed in detail about the bacteria okay so i'm not repeating them now what next the diplococci it's this is a diplococci okay this is also known as diplococcus pneumoniae this is a cocobacilli that is cocci plus bacilli this is bacilli which is rod shaped okay now the symptoms now when it comes to symptoms you have to understand that everyone causes fever chest pain shortness of breath this also causes the same this also causes the same but the difference is the sputum production is very high in the first two sputum production is very high whereas legionella the point where we are discussing it is dry cough it's not sputum production is not very high and they will be muscle aches there will be diarrhea there will be confusions okay so this is very typical pneumonia with if you see anywhere pneumonia with muscle aches diarrhea and confusion it is legionella okay pneumonia with muscle aches diarrhea and confusion you have to know that it is legionella okay so this picture should remind you this muscle here and this gastric symptoms this too along with respiratory system it is legionnaire's disease okay this is legionnaire's disease hope you got it okay so here the key what i want to tell you is not all pneumonia are the same okay the pneumonia caused by legionella has got some specific feature that is dry cough with muscle aches diarrhea and confusion okay now let's come to the other question the next question which is uh, all about the selective media or i would say more of a culturing okay culturing the bacteria so the next question is a select question on selective media of uh, legionella okay now the question is an elderly patient presented with fever chest pain dry cough now dry cough is a feature of legionella but that is not the diagnostic fee or the the key factor key feature here okay uh, sputum culture showed growth on charcoal yeast extract media that's a that's a selective media of legionella now what is selective media what is enriched media what is enrichment media everything is there in the uh, detailed lecture section okay the comprehensive course now okay the organism is that's a question staphylococcus pneumonia h influenza legionella now here you know the answer is this but how to differentiate that's the key okay now oh, my mistake there is ludlam's media actually the the media for staphylococcus aureus is, is ludlam's media but the key here is you have to remember this picture charcoal you know the black charcoal so charcoal and yeast combined in agar that's what is buffer charcoal yeast agar okay and you can see the bacteria there okay the bacteria which is a rod shaped bacteria being growing all over there in the sections okay this is if you no know, see basically you are not identifying the morphology you're checking if there is a growth or not you provide this media okay now for example you like biryani and there is some other person who doesn't like who hates biryani imagine so someone is uh, you know putting both of you in a cage and uh, he is giving you biryani every day and you are eating biryani with full stomach definitely within 1 2 months you will become very fat the other person hates biryani and he is being given every day biryani what is going to do he might eat a little bit to just uh, you know uh, maintain his uh, appetite but other than that the remaining is going to throw so he will he grow no he will not grow fat there so similarly you provide a buffer chart call yeast extract and if there is this particular bacteria it is going to grow legionella will grow others will grow no so this is how it is you diagnose it okay and as i have told you the culture is one of the very very crucial method of diagnosis for the particular bacteria okay so this question comes there is nothing much to think charcoal yeast extract okay even they can ask you image based questions based on this okay this particular image so if this question comes there is no doubt charcoal yeast extract it is legionella okay it is legionella now i am going to quickly discuss on okay the answer is legionella some very important selective medias which you have to note okay you will get the notes of it on your app 
okay those who are watching on youtube okay those who are watching on youtube it's just a demo lecture for you all uh, you are not going to get the notes here okay no, notes are there in the app this lecture is also there in the app for the mastering course students so some important selective medias are selective media for now see this method of learning i don't like very much all the selective medias you can't learn it will not stay there it's difficult what i prefer personally is study one bacteria in a topic topic wise manner and study the culture media related to that that is much easier way to learn but yes now we are discussing questions so we can't go into each and every bacteria every time so this chart this list should be learned okay this list should be learned uh, it's not always very easy to learn all the culture medias together it will take time so take your time you'll get this notes so take your time learn it slowly by slowly okay learning for neat mds is not a hurry bury thing it happens very slowly with multiple revision so selective media for staph aureus is lithium chloride telluride agar combined this is known as ludlam's media okay for staph aureus you have got ludlam's media for streptococcus you have got pikes media pikes media okay streptococcus pikes media gonococcus you have got different media one is taylor martin i remembered it as taylor martin okay taylor martin stewart stewart media okay so there is taylor martin and stewart media there okay then you have got corine bacterium the best selective media for diagnosis it is telluride media so here there was a composition which is telluride agar here the media in itself is telluride media for corine bacterium diphtheria okay corine bacterium diphtheria best or selective media for diagnosis is this but if you want a faster diagnosis it's lawless serum slow remember this so the best media for diagnosis is telluride media faster diagnosis is lawless serum slow okay coming to the next one i'm i'm just quickly going through it so what is selective what is enriched what is enrichment everything is there in the lectures part okay so uh, selective enrichment media is plate media okay plate media for salmonella which causes typhoid it is selenide f broth very easy s and s selenide f broth then vibrio it is tcbs media okay transport media uh, for vibrio cholera is uh, vr media okay so vibria the selective media is uh, tcbs the transport media is vr media which is an indian media that is venkat raman ramakrishnan media and another is you now the european people said no no we need our person also there so this is the okay, carry blair media okay remember tony blair so carry blair okay carry blair selective media for campylobacter it is skiros media and for pseudomonas it is cetrimide media and finally the media selective media for bacillus petrotis is bordet jengo media so this bacillus is bordetella so bordet jengo that's how you can remember okay and more selective media for tuberculosis dorset egg is there lj media is very important lowenstein jensen media is a selective media okay lowenstein jensen media then you have got for leptospirosis you have got a media called corthoff's media and emjh media that is elling hausen mcclock media which was modified by johnson and harris you don't need to learn that emgh is more than enough at least if you can learn this media now see how to learn these things you have to repeat it every day till it goes into your mind till you develop the photographic memory you can't learn you can't say that over oh, i'm going to learn it today nor you can develop any short form for this when there's a very long list okay 3 4 5 it's fine short form will work all those things you the only way is to develop a photographic memory okay the only way is to develop a photographic memory so today tomorrow i tell the students okay certain things you just take a print out or write it down so ideally the best thing is to write it down in your own handwriting and keep it stick it there somewhere and see there every day so it will just because any of this can come as a question there is hundreds and hundreds of medias left okay so i just have picked some very important ones only and this any one can come as a question please note any one can come as a question okay now so what's the key here i want to just tell you here one thing charcoal yeast extract so don't worry about all those medias and all we'll come to somewhere we'll come to all those medias again 
in the form of question. So key here is charcoal yeast extract medium is for what? The legionella. Okay, legionella. Now coming to the next question, which is very, very simple. Now you are very much aware of it. Now uh, let's come to another disease which I've told you about pontic fever. Pontic fever is another disease caused by legionella. The one other one was legionnaire's disease. This is pontic fever also caused by the legionella. Let's come to the question. All the following statement about pontic fever are true except. Now it's a medical repeat in 2016. Now let's come to the option. It occurs in epidemics. In fact, the, the, the statement is true. It has got a very high attack rate. I'll tell you what attack rate is. It is true. Pneumonia is a most common manifestation never. There is no pneumonia. I told you in Pontic fever, there is no pneumonia. That's the correct answer. Antibiotic therapy is not required. Yes, it's not required because it's a self-limiting illness. So let's come to what Pontic fever is. So correct answer is C. Pneumonia is the most common manifestation. No, it is not. Okay, now let's come to what is Pontic fever. It's a mild self-limiting flu-like illness. So self-limiting, no antibiotics required, self-limiting. The most important point you're going to learn here about Pontic fever, one is it's a self-limiting disease. Okay, it's a self-limiting disease. Caused by, again, the same bacteria, Legionella pneumophila. Characterized by fever, headache, muscle ache, chills, everything the same. Okay, and can even cause symptoms like cough, or chest pain shortness of breath everything will be there but not one thing what is that unlike legionnaire's disease pneumonia is not a common manifestation pneumonia mostly it is not seen okay so this picture has to come to your mind when it is pontic disease cross on pneumonia okay there is no pneumonia in pontic disease that means the option c is false and d is true c is false why pneumonia is not C is true. Based on this first slide, you can see here self-limiting. Okay, because so antibiotics not required, and yes, pneumonia is not a common symptom. Now let's come to the other option. Occurs in epidemics. Yes, it occurs in epidemics. What happens? What is epidemics? Epidemics now. Epidemics is means a particular area being infected entirely. Okay, so true. It's a true statement because. When the water system, now you know it's in the water system they develop, become contaminated with Legionella, it can lead to outbreak of the Pontic fever in the entire place. So it's true. Coming to the next option has a high attack rate. It's also true. So what is basically the attack rate? Attack rate, it's basically comes in community, but I'll discuss this here. It's a proportion of people. Okay, proportion, ratio, proportion and all, you study how. So, you know what proportion is. The proportion of people who are exposed, now, I am staying in a place where lots of people have got this disease and I am exposed to it. Through what? Through contaminated water, not person to person. Remember that, I am using the same water for drinking or any purposes. Okay, so I can get infected. No, there is no person to person infection, remember. Okay, so the attack rate refers to the proportion of people who are exposed and subsequently become infected. So recently the COVID is a very typical example, but that there was a person-to-person -person infection, but attack rate was very high. That means Pontic fever has got high attack rate, okay, which means that there is a significant proportion of people who are exposed to disease will develop the disease. If you're exposed to it, you will develop. Okay, there is very little chance that it will not, it will go asymptomatic. No, you will develop it. That's, so that is also true. It has got a very high attack rate. Okay, so this will help. So that's all about some very important areas of the uh, particular disease, which is Legionella. Okay, now okay, I'll discuss. Okay, few more very important points. I just want you to keep in mind. Okay, by that we'll end. Okay, one just one more slide. I'm going to discuss, and then we'll end this particular topic of Legionella. So some more on Legionella. So if you're a person who is like, you know, I want more, okay, this is a little bit more for you, okay? Basically morphology, you know it, gram-negative rod. Disinfectants, now see, uh, they said that the water can get infected and it can cause epidemics. Okay, also in uh, AC, if you're staying in AC hall, AC rooms and all, uh, it can cause problems. So how do you dis disinfect it? What do you use? You can use chlorine, definitely, very commonly used. You can use hydrogen peroxide, very important. Copper-silver ionization. 
and UV radiation. Remember these two at least, copper, silver, ionization and UV radiation. They can ask you this as a question, okay. So then, this can kill the bacteria and water systems. Now, what's the drug of choice? We said uh, Pontic fever is self-limiting. You don't need to do anything. But pneumonia, it's a problem. Many a times it, was, it won't cause any problem. But if at all you want to keep a drug, what's the drug of choice? Drug of choice is macrolide. Okay, azithromycin or clarithromycin, macro, I tell them. Macro, remember it as a ball. Okay, macro, big ball. So what do you do? You throw. Okay, so azithromycin, clarithromycin. Okay, azithro, clarithro, that's how you can remember the macro lights. Okay, then you have got, if there is a severe case, which is not where you don't have macro lights being affected, or if there is a resistance to macro lights, what do you do? You can use fluoroquinolones. What's the examples of fluoroquinolones? Levofloxacin, moxifloxacin, all those. Now, everything fine. If you can remember here, only one point, macro light. I'll be more than happy. Okay, that's enough. Let's quickly review what did we learn today. I'm not going to every details, just what is needed. Okay, just what is needed. So, Legionnaire's disease, the most important thing I told you, you should remember the air conditioned room in the hotel. Okay, and all those symptoms, everything. So, air conditioned room, rest all, it is patient to patient. Okay, there is no human here. Most common streptococcus pneumoniae. Okay. Uh, the, the cause of pneumonia and back, the virus is influenza virus, mycoplasma is the atypical one. Transmission, we stated already, now antibody is not always diagnostic, remember all these things, amoeba it can grow but there is no man to man transmission, remember the pictures. Now yes, muscle ache, confusion, GI symptoms is there in the particular disease, okay, that's the key of it, others and it's a dry cough, others don't have this. Now another thing is charcoal yeast extract medium okay charcoal is extract medium very very important other all you can just quickly rush through it develop photographic memory the key of pontic fever is one is it is self-limiting second is it's not causing pneumonia definitely can cause epidemics and has got a very high attack rate and yes if you can use copper silver ionization uv radiation plus chlorine hydrogen peroxide it's very good the drug of choice is macrolide azithromycin if resistance, you can use fluoroquinolones. Okay, so by this, I'll come and end to this particular topic, which is Legionella. Okay.